This 1973 Dodge van has some fuel delivery issues. The fuel filters get clogged up with some rusty brown silt. So my guess is the gas tank's probably just chock full of rust. The sanding unit also doesn't seem to really do its job. The gauge just kind of reads whatever it wants to. So there might be a float issue there. We're gonna investigate, see what's going on. First step is to pop the sending unit out and drain what little gas or what lot of gas. I don't actually know how much is in there. Hopefully not a lot. We'll drain that out and then take a peek inside. If I do need a new gas tank, I got a brand new one in the back, um, which we can put in pretty short order. So let's get started. So the sitting unit's on the passenger rear of the tank. Looks like I won't have to jack the vehicle up. It's up high enough that I think I can get the tank pulled out if I need to do that. The uh, rubber hose probably could use replacement. They don't have the ground strap hooked up. That should be clipped to the metal fuel line there. So that could be part of the reason why the sending unit is not doing what it needs to do. But I guess let's get a drain pan and pop that lock ring out and see what comes out and see if we can take a peek inside the tank. First thing I'm gonna do is take the rubber line loose. Drain all the gas out that we can. Kinda looks like somebody's peeing. Put the sending unit wire on. Now they do make a tool to get these lock rings off, but you can also just use a flathead screwdriver and a hammer, put it up on these tabs that stick out, and rotate it to the left to unlock it. So I guess I'll start doing that while this gas is still draining. the lock ring off. Now the part where all the gas comes exploding out.
so there's no sock on the end of this anymore that's just gone and it just kind of crumbles apart and the float also is full of gas you might can see it when I tap it gas is coming out of it so actually you can hear it another way to test it would be to put it in a cup of water or gas and see if it floats but needless to say this thing is pretty grungy pretty rusty coming off on my hands might need a new one yeah it's looking pretty rusty in there so that's probably the problem Take the filler tube connection off. Now you want to put a piece of wood or something on your jack so you don't damage the gas tank by crushing it. it gives a greater surface area so less pressure on one small area which could dent the tank. two vent hoses on the passenger side that need to be disconnected. Got the vent tubes removed. I just cut the clamps. We'll just put regular screw type clamps back on. There's also another vent tube on the driver's side there that'll have to be removed. Got the gas tank out without making too much of a mess. Just kidding. This seems to always happen. I accidentally dropped the tank on its side and dumped out the rest of it. You can see the new tank is pretty much an exact copy. The stamp it a little different. Have to swap out the tube. Got the uh, grommet installed. I have to put the tube in. Getting the filler tube in is quite difficult, but if you use a piece of wood in both your hands, you can get that thing to pop right in. 
the original tank had two vents and they were probably cement has four so i looked at how they were oriented inside the tank and basically just looped the outer ones <laughs> So I got the tank installed, got everything done except for putting in the new sending unit. I'm going to have to wait for that to come in the mail. But I got everything buttoned up. Um, and basically, the only thing I have to do is pop that sending unit in, plug in the wire, hook up the last piece of fuel line, and this thing should be good to go. That was the last of the problems that I had to fix. I ordered a new sending unit because the original sending unit was just in pretty bad shape. It just came in today, had to wait whatever it was, five days or something. And uh, yep, looks like a sending unit. And it does come with another gasket and locking ring. Made in Taiwan. Guess we can compare it to the original. Hmm. It looks like, for the most part, it is an exact copy couple little minor differences but looks like it should be perfectly fine pretty much any Mopar from 1960 up is going to have a fuel sending unit ohm range between 10 and 73 ohms 73 being empty 10 being full as you can see empty I read 72.8 which is close enough to 73 and full 9.7 which is right on so I don't think there's any issue with the new sending unit but a lot of new ones do have incorrect ohms especially for the late 50s stuff that's a little bit different with that being said there's probably an issue with the gauge itself in the cluster or maybe a grounding issue with the gauge or something of that sort so i'm gonna go ahead and finish putting the sending unit in since i know that that's not the issue so you don't want to forget the gasket little notches that the sending unit fits in so it'll only go in one way and that's it right there and a lot of times I'll kind of help the gasket to where it needs to be using a screwdriver this one came with a new lock ring
seems to be pretty tight. So I'm going to hook up the sending unit wire. Just pushes on. And I'm going to put on a new piece of fuel hose. And I got the ground strap here. So that just connects to the sending unit nipple there. And then around to the fuel line on the van. That's just extra ground there. Make sure it gets a good ground. All right. And that's that everything installed so the tank is done now I just need to put some gas in it and now this thing is drivable